Did I mention 20 teams start their OTAs today? This is the culmination of the offseason program, phase three. And it's so funny. I remember when they first coined the phrase, Chris. It happened at some point in the past 22 years that I've been doing this, where they started calling these practices. I remember at one point they called them quarterback camps. They had these different yeah, names. Yeah, right. Coded words. And and they, they, they it's like, why not just call it football practice? And they avoided it because at the end of the day, for so long, and you were part of the NFL when this was happening, it was practice. It was normal practice. The guys just didn't have pads on. But they're still out there beating the shit out of each other with helmets and nothing else. Well, I mean, they had clothes on. But, you know, and, and the, I remember hearing that the offensive linemen were like, can we just wear pads? Yeah, I'm all exactly. banged up That's from what helmets was. hitting me. Right. Because you, you get, you get grown-ass men out there. Yeah. And what do you expect them to do? They're full yeah. of testosterone. They want to compete. You tell them, oh, oh, go easy. They don't go easy. And the coaches had no incentive to tell them to go easy until it became kind of a thing and the union got involved and it's it's gotten under control since then. But this was the hallmark of the offseason program, the OTAs. It yeah. was football practice for two or three weeks, and it was full contact, full go, just no pads. Everybody had helmets, cleats, and that's it. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it was it was like to the point of it was aggressive – it was full speed. It was everything except, yeah, no full contact, no knock the receiver out when he's running across the middle, right? But there was plenty, enough to it wear. It still happens sometimes. It definitely it still, still, still happens. Happen. There'd happen be a big not. fight. Right, right. You know, it, it's hard, like you said. You know, it's hard to control everybody's emotions like that. And you're right in the fact that, like, linemen used to be like, can we just wear pads? Because the defensive linemen, the way they're hitting hands and they're twisting and stunting and doing all that and running into the side of a guy to pick him to let the other guy come underneath and get after the quarterback. Where, yeah, linemen were like, what, can we just put shoulder pads and, and, and our, you know, thigh pads and all that on to protect ourselves here? Because it, it was basically full speed without the tackling to the ground element. And then, like, you know, also, like you said, Mike, it's it's hard to tell, oh, there's 90 guys on the field. You can tell the superstars in the starting D linemen, hey, take a little off, you know, the gas pedal here. Let's go 85%. That's good. But guy number 85 on the roster who's trying to make us, like, make somebody notice him, he doesn't know anything but, like, I got to go full speed and show people what I got here. I only got a few opportunities, and that's where it becomes tricky, and that's where I think the NFL had to step in a little bit and control this to, to a degree, um, and uh, I think they got it in the right place now. That risk is there every year. Those guys at the bottom of the roster who don't care about crossing the line, yeah. they're trying to get someone's attention. You're right. That's true every year. The coaches have to be in a position to take the steam out of those guys. The coaches at some level like that steam. It's easier to coach it out of a guy than to coach it into a That's guy. Right. And they're concerned if you start coaching it out of the guy, it ain't going to come back. Yeah. And the other teams to watch, the teams with first-year, first-time head coaches, will they be a little more aggressive? Because yeah. we'll see. Coaches get whacked. Typically they we'll do. We'll hear about it weeks after the fact. Right. And a lot of times it's that first-year guy or somebody trying to turn a program around. Like the Broncos. Maybe you want to watch the Broncos right. a little more carefully. Change the culture. Sean Payton New and they're team. kicking ass right. and taking names. Right. Right. And they're willing to to skirt, you know, the possibility of having to pay 50 grand or whatever the fine is. And, you know, if you do it multiple times and you start having to worry about draft picks, the Seahawks have had multiple violations in the past. <laughs> Shocker. Whole spirit of competition. <laughs> yeah, go out there and compete and compete right. and compete. And – and you have to ask yourself, it's it's a, it's a business calculation. Yeah. Is it worth the risk of getting whacked if the benefit is my team is better suited to compete on Sundays during football season? This is the preparation. The foundation is being laid. The guys are here. Let's go out there. Let's begin the process of crafting our best 53 and getting the right mindset in these players. Why wait until July? They're here. Let's do it now. That's the balance. And I'd say for some teams – it's strategic, willing to take the risk that yeah. the NFLPA is going to order Push up limit. film of practice and possibly punish us right. because we come out of it with a better collection of football players. Yeah, that, that's right. I think I think teams are willing to push the limit. I think teams a lot of the times, you know, almost call the bluff of the NFLPA representative that's on the football team, right? To where they know that they can call like that. Every team has two representatives where. They know they can call and be like, hey, we we were on the field an hour too long today. 
we had 10 people get knocked to the ground. Nobody's supposed to get hit out here. You know, that can go on, but teams are willing to kind of call the bluff. And a lot of the times, the guy that's the NFLPA representative, he's a guy that also loves football and loves the team. And he's willing to, okay, we stayed on the field for 25 or 30 minutes. So what? That's the sacrifice of it. So I do think teams are willing to to take those chances. And I know that's not full through. You know, there's a lot of players that try to do right by the, the guys that are NFLPA representatives and do call and tattletale. But they also, you know, get a get a little bit of a, a reputation around the NFL, too, if you're that guy that does that too much. So, you know, to your point, yeah, this is the time of the year where team building, you know, get it ready for training camp. This is who we are. We got to buy into a mantra. And that's where it can get a little emotional and, and out of hand in the OTAs at times. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.